All right, gang, here we go. This is for physics unit eight. This is part three. We're talking about curved mirrors. This will probably be uh, one of the more lengthier parts in the unit here. Okay, so buckle down. We're going to draw some more ray diagrams. We're going to do some math. All right, you're going to bend your brain a little bit, which will be good for you. All right, so, so far we've primarily focused on flat mirrors, right? And it was easy to deal with flat mirrors because we're used to seeing them. Not only that, but the image distance and the distance of our object from the mirrors were always equal to one another. So it made dealing with flat mirrors very easily, very easily. Uh, and kind of drawing the ray diagrams was just kind of more of a triviality than actually useful. Um, concave mirrors and convex mirrors are curved mirrors that we're going to talk about today. Okay, um, both of these mirrors are the small portion of the inside of a sphere. So you could imagine that this uh, this mirror here if you continued these lines around it would make a circle that came out around like this and this C would be the center of it alright and so essentially when we make these mirrors alright these mirrors are uh, just a portion of these things and we'll mess with them in class and they they don't sometimes they come as just like a you know a shell like that but most of the time they come as like a circle um, and then we can use that circle and we'll you know do things like that and we can use these for all sorts of different applications um, most notably like uh, satellite dishes use these kind of this shape here and the reason they're important is because any time a ray comes in that's parallel to the principal axis and the principal axis is this guy that goes through the center right to the middle of your guy here any rays that come in that are parallel to that always get reflected right to this point that's halfway between the center and the edge of your mirror okay and we call that the focal point all right and with so this length from here or one half the radius is called the focal length so all these rays as long as they're parallel if they're parallel to that principal axis they come in and they bounce off the mirror and they hit the focal point now the reason this is really good for like satellite images is that when we have a satellite like in your backyard picking up TV signals or something like that the rays are coming from a very very long ways away and because they're coming from a long ways away we can assume that they're mostly parallel and as soon as and because they're mostly parallel um, then we can use this principle to help us focus this information and be able to get a good signal okay and so that's essentially uh, that's like one of the big uses for these guys here for these concave mirrors there's lots of other uses but they're super helpful okay um, so so these guys here converge okay the the light rays into a single point okay the focal length is always one half of the radius all right the radius is from the C to here and then the focal point right here is always halfway between the two and we call that the focal length here they use this curvy F which is kind of confusing because it's the same symbol they use for frequency uh, so I'll primarily focus on using a capital F all right Another thing we need to talk about is the difference between real images and virtual images. When we talked about flat Im flat mirrors, we talked about how virtual the flat mirror forms a virtual image. So if this was our flat mirror, right, we had an image or an object over here, like pencil or something, and then these rays came along and formed an image on the other side, you know, and we were able to draw and predict where that would be by drawing those rays, right? And remember this, and then we'd have this ray. Here's my really shoddy ray diagram, okay? And so, but this guy here, this image was formed by rays that didn't actually exist. So this was called a virtual image, okay? Virtual, a virtual image, all right? But uh, concave and convex mirrors can form virtual or real images depending on where the object is, whether or not it's close to the mirror, far apart from the mirror, between the center and the, uh, the focal point. And so because of those two things, we have to kind of keep track of what we have. So we have this different definition of virtual images versus uh, real images. Virtual images are like what we're used to. If they're formed by rays that don't actually exist, then it's a virtual image. Okay, uh, Real rays or real images are formed by rays that are real, that really exist. So this guy here, you see these rays that are coming in, and we'll talk about how to draw a ray diagram for a concave mirror here in a second. But these rays bounce off the mirror, and they're real. They're right here. They're not projections of, by our brain over here. They're real, so this creates a real image. And real images are really nice because we can actually use these to project the image onto a screen. 
All right. So, uh, for example, if you've ever like old school days, like old school, like when I was in high school, he had overhead projectors. Every teacher had an overhead projector and they would take a, a transparency sheet. Right. It was just like a clear piece of plastic, stick it on top of a, a piece of glass that had a light bulb underneath it. And then they'd shine a light. You'd write on it and they shine a light through the, pl the plastic uh, and the, you know, the parts that you wrote on would block the light and it would go up and hit a concave mirror and then it would project it onto the screen up behind you. So you could see what the teachers writing okay super helpful so they didn't have to use chalkboards this was before whiteboards were really popular as well so uh, chalkboards were kind of a pain in the neck so anyway um, but it, so the point of it is is that we could actually project this image so real images are arguably more useful than virtual images because we can project them but it's kind of a toss-up they each have their uses all right um, notice we have a lot of the same uh, units or variables that we did before. The object distance is still p, all right? And uh, so here's our p value, and then the image distance is still q. You should notice right away that this is different than a flat mirror. In a flat mirror, p was always equal to q, but in this, they can be different from one another, and they can be bigger, smaller, they can even be the same. Um, it just kind of depends on where your object is, depending on uh, where your c is, or where your object is in relation to your c and your f, okay? We also have our h and our h prime again notice that they're not necessarily the same like they were in a flat mirror in a fa flat mirror your height of your image and your object were always equal to one another but that's not necessarily true for a concave or convex mirror all right uh, and there's you know a lot of these are the things we just talked about is that your r value is your center and then your focal length is halfway to that point there okay um, and we call this this here is called the front of the mirror this is a good we're going to refer to this front of the mirror and then the back here is called the back of the mirror all right back of the mirror this is all right front back cool okay when we're drawing ray diagrams for curved mirrors or concave mirrors okay um, we have three rays that we're always going to draw and these are the rays we're always we're going to rely on because we do not have to draw or worry about uh, angles in order to draw them correctly Okay. Uh, remember when we did flat mirrors, if your angles were just a little bit off, and we didn't use a protractor in these videos, so uh, so our images were always a little off. The nice thing about these is that as long as you follow these three rules, okay, for these three rays, then you don't have to worry about the angles. You just make sure you draw a straight line, and you're golden. All right. So um, so the way this works here is that. Uh, the first one here is the line you draw from the object to the mirror okay so generally all right this is the way it's gonna look like this and you got your you know your focal length and your center or whatever okay so wherever your object is you're gonna draw it to the mirror going this way and then uh, the second thing tells you what it does after it hits the mirror okay um, so the first one here you draw it parallel to the principal axis so it goes from um, and this is the only ray diagram I'm going to draw in this video because, as you can tell, it's pretty rough. So it's going to go parallel to the principal axis, and then it bounces through the focal point. So it's going to go this way, and it's going to come this way like this. Okay, And so there's ray 1. See how it went to the right? Bounced off here straight to the focal point. All right, The second ray you draw is going to go through the focal point, okay, like this, through the focal point, going to hit your mirror, and it's going to bounce off parallel to your principal axis. Okay like so. And then finally, the last one you draw is always going to go through the center of curvature. All right, so it's going to go this way. But notice that if our object was here, the center of the curvature is not towards the mirror. So we're going to draw an imaginary line that makes our mirror, our ray bounce up here off the mirror this way, and then it'll come back through the center of curvature. Okay, and so those are the three rays that we'll draw. All right. And uh, th these three rays would uh, intersect over here somewhere, and then that's where your image would be, where these three intersect. Okay, So those are our three rays. All right. So you need to get lots of practice drawing those. There's uh, lots of practice ones coming up here in the notes. All right. So curved ray diagram. All right. So here's our parallel one, bounces off through the focal point. Okay. Here's our second one, through the focal point, bounces off parallel. And the third one bounces through the center of curvature and then back through itself going the other way. Okay, notice that where these three intersect, this relates to the same uh, part of the image that we started with. So it came from the tip of the pencil, so that means it would had to have been the tip of the pencil over here. Okay, now we have to ask ourselves, is the image real or virtual? Well, the image would have to be real because it's created by real rays. These aren't virtual rays on the opposite side. Is it inverted or upright? 
Okay, well, it's inverted, right? The uh, pencil is face up here, now it's face down, so therefore it's inverted. And it says larger than or smaller than or equal to the image in size, it's smaller than, right? And that's pretty easy to see. Okay, so these are the, and we can like start to predict what kind of image we're gonna get based on where our object is in relation to these things. And you'll find if you draw a bunch of these, that if your object is past the C value out farther, your, ob your image will always be inverted and smaller than the original object and the farther you go the smaller that image will be all right okay um, so it says uh, try drawing the ray diagram locating the image of the pencil if the object is placed at C all right now try it between C and F and instead of trying to do that here I just uh, took some images here all right so here's the one for at C all right so in your notes you know what in your notes whatever I already just pause it Go back here, pause it, and see if you can do one on your own. Do it real light so you can erase it just in case you did something wrong. All right, so here's here's the one for an object at C. The first ray goes to the right here, okay, bounces off here and goes through the focal point. Okay, so that's the first ray, ray number one. Ray number two goes through F and then bounces off parallel to your principal axis. And then uh, ray number three would go through the center of curvature, but since we can't have a ray reach the mirror through the center of curvature, since we're at the center of curvature, we will uh, we can't have that one. So then the image would be formed where these two rays intersect one another. So this is where our image is. So in this case, our image is again real, okay, but it's still inverted, okay, Inverted, and it's the same size. All right. Yep. So if we put our object right at the center, okay, we will always have a real inverted image that is the exact same size as the original. All right. Uh, between C and F, this is this is one like what I drew back here. Okay. This is the, this one, right? And so it looks pretty similar. I did an all right job. So ray number one. They've flipped, okay, so ray number one should be this one here that goes straight parallel, bounces off here to the center of curvature. So maybe we'll, just to keep consistency here, we'll cross that out and make that a one, and we'll cross this out and make this a one. Oh my gosh, there we go. So it bounces off here, stays parallel, bounces off the mirror through F, down here through the pencil. And then ray number two goes through the focal point, okay, through the focal point, all right, two, two, and then bounces off the mirror, Okay, goes back through parallel to the principal axis. And number three is going to go, it bounces from here up to the mirror, which they've cut off here, and then back down through the center of curvature. Okay, and so it goes down here. And so this really arrow, no rays are going that way, the rays going that way, because this ray goes this way. All right. Okay, so anyway, the ray would go up here, bounce off the mirror, and then come off this way here, going down. All right, and so this image here is real. Okay, again, it's formed by real rays. It's inverted, all right, inverted, but it's bigger, all right, so it's enlarged, all right. And so when we play with the real ones in class, you'll be able to see that um, you'll be able to see that you can actually move your finger through, and as it gets closer and closer to the mirror, your object will actually uh, be increased in size. And then now it says, try drawing the ray diagram, locating the image of the pencil if the object is placed at F. Okay, so pause the video, give that a shot, and then try another one uh, for beyond F. So that would be in here. Okay, so here, uh, here's the two last ones. Okay, so an object at F, here's ray number one. Okay, ray number one would be parallel to the axis and then bounce through F. Okay, that's ray number one. And then ray number two can't exist, right? Because ray number two has to go through the focal point and the, the ray would go straight down. It wouldn't hit the mirror. So ray number two can't be drawn. Ray number three would, uh, same idea, it goes up here, bounces off the mirror and then comes back down towards C, all right? And notice that these two rays, because we're right at F, these two rays are parallel to one another. Because they're parallel, they'll never intersect with each other. Because they'll never insect, intersect, they'll never form an image. All right, so when you're right at the focal point, you'll never find an image for your object. It just doesn't exist, all right? Uh, number, and then finally, this guy, when we're past the focal point, this is the, the more interesting one, in my opinion. When we're past the focal point, and you kind of have to look closely at these rays. So ray number one, all right, goes parallel to the principal axis, so that's this guy here, and then it bounces off through the focal point. 
okay like this so that's that one that there number two now this is kind of confusing number two um, it, it can't go through the focal point to hit the mirror so we do the same kind of idea that we did before where we draw a dashed line from the focal point through our object where it hits the mirror and then it's going to bounce off parallel so it comes off this way all right and then finally number three is going to do the same thing it always does bounce off the mirror and then go back through the, the center of curvature okay now notice that on this side of the mirror these objects are all or these rays are all diverging they just like a flat mirror they're all diverging on this side on the front side of the mirror but our eye will see them uh, intersecting on the back side of the mirror right and it forms and then they keep going this way and this is where they hit so this is where we see the image okay so instead of it so because these rays aren't real Okay, these are the virtual rays, then our image is virtual. Okay, so we have a virtual image, but our image is upright and it's larger. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. All right, and you can actually see this with the, those, the mirrors we'll look with at in class. Like you, as you stick your hand close to it, you'll actually see it starts small, upside down, it gets closer, it'll disappear, and then it'll get real big and upright. Okay, it's kind of bizarre. Okay. So practice drawing these, all right? It takes a lot of practice to get them just right. Don't be afraid to erase marks. Do it lightly, use a ruler, okay? Um, yeah, it, just, it takes some work. Don't get discouraged, all right? Just, but if you just follow those three ray rules and really think through what you're doing, you can do it, all right? Then we have two equations we need to be able to use. We have the mirror equation, all right? So this states that one over P plus one over Q equals one over F. Remember, P is the object distance, Q is the image distance, and one, and then F is the focal length, all right? Um, a couple of important values, okay? P and Q are positive if they are on the front side, so that's important, okay? If they're on the front side, they are positive, okay? If they're on the back side, they're uh, negative, okay? So that means if our image is real, it'll be positive. Okay. If our image is uh, virtual, then it will be negative. Okay. So if you can identify, well, that will form a, a real or an, a virtual image. You can determine if your Q is positive or negative. Because the, the, that one side, the front side of your mirror is your reflecting side, your object, your P, will always have a positive value. All right. And your F is always positive for concave mirrors. All right. Now, you also need to know the equation for magnification. This allows us to calculate how big our object will be, right? Whether it'll be like twice as big or half as big or, you know, 80 times as big, okay? And that's, there's two different ways to calculate it. Image height over object height, that's the magnification. And this is just a ratio, so that's not really that helpful because if you can just uh, take a ruler and measure those two things, it's not such a big deal. But even better is if we can, we can use uh, these guys here to be able to actually find, assuming that we drew them exactly, right to scale we can actually um, draw and find the image distance right and so we can calculate the image mag or the magnification just by using image distance over object distance and don't forget that negative value there negative Q over P okay your M will always be positive for virtual images okay um, but and then your M is negative for the others Okay, so here we go, some practice problems. All right, when an object is placed 30 centimeters in front of a concave mirror, a real image is formed 60 centimeters from the mirror's surface. Find the focal length. All right, so this isn't too bad. Uh, so our formula that we're going to use is just the, the mirror formula here that we had before. Remember, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. Okay, and we want to find the focal length, so we find uh, the focal length here. So I always use one trick to doing these and making sure you don't foul it up on your calculator here is to use your inverse button. That's what that x to the negative one, that flips whatever you're doing upside down. So if you have a calculator like mine, okay, it's up above the squared. It's the x to the negative one power. I don't know how Casios do it. They're weird. All right. So essentially our f value, if we, we can just flip this guy over, so f would be equal to... 1 over p plus 1 over q to the negative 1 power. All right. Okay, we can't flip each of these individually because that's not how fractions work. All right, but so but we'd have to add them and then take the inverse, okay? So, oh, sorry. So, if we plug all these guys in here, okay? So, uh, object is placed. So, this is our this is our p value. This is the object distance and then q is 60. That's your image, all right? And it says it's a real image. Okay? 
So we have, uh, so our F value would be equal to one over 30, and we can change, leave it in centimeters. It'll just give us our focal length in centimeters, or you can convert it to meters and you, it'll give you your focal length in meters. No big deal either way. And then one over 60, and we'll take the inverse of that value there. Okay, so 30 inverse. So what I do, here's what I do when I do these problems so I don't make any mistakes. All right, I'll walk you through exactly what I plug in. I hit the parentheses button, I hit 30, inverse so I hit the negative 1 button we just talked about and then I say uh, so that's 1 over 30 is what that means and then I do plus 60 inverse okay so then and then end parentheses so right now I have bracket 30 inverse plus 60 inverse and then I hit the inverse button for the whole thing all right and so then this guy here spat out 20 and we needed three sig figs so it would be 20.0 and since I left these in centimeters I would have centimeters all right no big deal let's try another one all right. A square object is placed 15 centimeters in front of a concave mirror with a focal length of 25 centimeters. A round object is placed 45 centimeters in front of the same mirror. Find the image distance, magnification, and type of image form. So let's just sketch what we're doing here. I'm doing it up here because I got other stuff down below. And I'm thinking about. I'm thinking ahead. You should be proud of me. All right. So uh, it says in front of a concave mirror with a focal length of 25 centimeters. So that's that's that guy at 25. All right, and then so that would be our center at 50 because these are exactly you know it's twice as much right so uh, the first object is 15 centimeters in front so that means object one is somewhere in here between the mirror and the focal point so it's going to be there okay and then the second object is at 45 so that means it has to be between the focal length of that guy so we'll say that's one and that's two all right, so let's find the image distance, magnification, and type of image formed for each object. Draw a ray diagram for each. Well, uh, so I would draw, let's draw the ray diagrams first. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to draw anymore. So I just copied and pasted it. Because remember, back here, we looked at mirrors for that were all the possible cases. Okay. So we can just kind of skip ahead here and just, I just copied and pasted these guys. So this is, this is for the object. So this would be object two. All right. Uh, because there are, our object is between the focal point and the center all right so our image should be real inverted and bigger all right so that gives us kind of a, a thing that we're looking for and then our and then this would be object number one all right and that's between the focal point and the mirror here all right and our image should be virtual okay upright and magnified okay so in both cases we should find uh, magnification as, as a bigger than one and we should also find that uh, for the first one that our that our image distance should be negative because it's on the back side of the mirror all right so let's jot down our formulas again just so we don't forget them one over p plus one over q equals one over the focal length and the other one was and we don't have any height that value so we're not even going to bother writing that guy down so it's negative q over p okay so first one it says um, we want to find the image distance. So the image distance is Q. So if we're going to rearrange this to solve for Q, Q would be equal to uh, 1 over F minus 1 over P to the inverse. Okay. So pause the video for a second. Make sure I did all that right. Okay. Uh, verify it for yourself. Do a little bit of algebra. All right. So we can do this for both objects. So the focal length, so we'll say Q1, all right, uh, would be. 1 over our focal length, which is 25, minus 1 over the object distance, so that would be the 15, all right, and then inverse of that, all right. So again, parentheses, 25 inverse minus 15 inverse, end parentheses inverse, we get negative 37.5 centimeters, all right, uh, two sig figs, so it would be negative 38 centimeters. All right, and then so the second image distance, and we won't rewrite this formula here. We'll just say it's uh, the same mirror, so it's the same focal length minus one over uh, the second image is at 45, and the inverse of that. All right, so it'd be 25 inverse, oops, parentheses 25 inverse minus 45 inverse to the inverse of that, and two sig figs, so it would become 56 centimeters. All right, so now we have our Q and our P. All right. And then, uh, so that's the image distance and magnification. All right, so our magnification for one, uh, so we don't have to rearrange this formula, so it would be negative Q, so negative negative 38 divided by uh, 15, 
right? So 38 divided by 15, and we get uh, 2.5. And then magnification of 2 should be negative 56 divided by... Oh, shoot, you guys are all yelling at me, isn't it? It's not 15. The focal length is at 25. I knew 2.5 didn't sound right. So 38 divided by 25, that's going to give us 1. Point. That's the right answer. I was like, what happened? All right. 1.5. Here we go. All right, 1.5. And then this guy here would be negative uh, 56 over 25. All right, negative so 56 divided by 25. You get 2.2 and this makes sense right uh, because it says you know we this should be a negative value because it's on the back side of the mirror this should be positive because it's on the front side of the mirror uh, this should be um, oh and it's negative 2.2 my bad and then this should be a uh, it should be bigger so that's why it's bigger than one but it and but it's not nearly as much magnified as this one is right this one this is our object one this is the first object this would be the the square object right and then this would be the round object okay and uh, notice that it's a negative on the magnification because it's flipped upside down um, and so object one would be virtual object two would be real all right Okay, let's see if we got the same thing. So they got their Q is negative 38 and magnification is 2.5. Nailed it. 56 and 1 negative uh, 1.2. 56. Oh, 2.2. All right. 56 over 25. Okay. And then the ray diagram should look like that. Okay. Convex mirrors. Okay, convex mirrors are the opposite of concave mirrors. Their reflective surface is on the outside of the mirror, where it's all where it's got a bigger curve. Okay, so they're uh, convex, right? So they're spread out like this. Okay, um, and so we can kind of draw them. We have the exact same rules for drawing the rays, but it's slightly different because the focal length, the focal point, and the curve are on the opposite sides. All right. Um, <clears throat> and so the ray number one would be parallel to it, and then it would bounce off as if it would pass through the focal point. Okay, ray number two would go as if it was going to pass through the focal point, and then bounce off the mirror parallel to the principal axis. And ray number three would go as if it's going through the center, but bounce off uh, and along itself again. All right. And so our eye, when our eye sees the image, is going to see where these three lines here hit each other. Okay. Um, and so you got to be careful here, all right, because you don't want to use this one here. And the reason I re the way I remember not to use this ray, okay, is because this one doesn't intersect the other three, all right. So we'd only want, and it, uh, and see, this would have been, oh, that's what the eye sees, all right. So anyway, and so our image will always be virtual for a convex mirror, always virtual and always smaller, okay. Um, and it's all because it's always diverging. All right, so it's always virtual and always smaller. All right, um, convex mirrors have a, a little bit a different applications than the concave mirrors. Okay, convex mirrors we use them for the side view mirrors on the cars, and you notice that on the side it says objects and mirror are smaller than they appear. That's because they're convex, and the reason we use convex mirrors is because it gives you a little bit wider angle of view. Right, so we can actually see kind of what's going on a little bit better around us. All right, and so uh, there are. Uh, smaller than they appear because they're convex, right? And they're virtual images, so we couldn't actually project them anywhere. Um, and so they appear small, so if you're not careful, they look like they're farther away than they actually are. Uh, they also use them in stores to monitor shoppers if you're like looking and next time you're at like a like a Walgreens or something like that, look up at the, you know, at the um, the ceiling at the end of a row and you'll probably see like a big silver mirror like that and it's so that uh, the store workers employees if you will will be able to see who's in what aisle you know at any given time all right the nice thing is is because it's a mirror we can still use the same equation of uh, the equations that we did for the concave mirrors all right so let's do a couple practice problems it says a convex mirror has a radius of curvature of 12 where's the focal point where the focal point would be half of the radius of curvature so it's six Negative. Awesome. Now, also notice that it's got to be negative because it's behind the mirror, 
right? And if we look at this diagram here, right? This is the front of our mirror because it's the front of the, the, the mirror side of it. So now this is the front, and this is the back. And because it's on the back, the focal point is negative and the center is negative, okay? So it's got this radius of curvature of 12. So the focal point has to be negative or it's negative and it's six because it's half that value, all right? It says, find the position of the image for an object placed the following distance uh, distances away. All right, so here's our Q val or P values. All right, and we got to find our Q values. Okay, uh, so same idea here. Let's just jot down our formulas. Okay, one over P plus one over Q equals one over F. Okay, we want uh, image. We want uh, image distance position of the image, right? So Q would be equal to one over P plus one over F to the inverse, all right? So one over P, all right? Uh, so we'll just do one or the one or two of these. I hope there's not another one on here. Okay, good. All right, I didn't know if I was gonna run out of space or not. One over P, so our P is 50, all right? Our focal length is the negative six. Oh, oh you, yeah, I fouled it up, didn't I? I fouled up my algebra. Okay, if we're going to solve for Q, this is going to look slightly different, right? All right, so because we subtract the 1 over P over, so it would be 1 over F minus 1 over uh, P to the inverse 1. All right, so um, 1 over F. Now remember, our F value is negative because it's on the back side of the mirror, so it would be negative 6 minus 1 over P, which is our 50, all right, inverse. Okay, and so we get uh, parentheses, negative six inverse minus 50 inverse inverse. Okay, and we get negative 5.4 centimeters. Oh, these all have three sig figs, so five point, shoot. I just can't be consistent from one problem to the other, can I? Negative 5.36 centimeters. Okay, uh, let's do one more, all right, Q. So it's the same formula though, right? One over F and one minus one over P inverse one. All right, so it'd be one over negative six because it's the same mirror minus and our new distance is 30 the inverse. So we say parentheses negative six inverse minus 30 inverse inverse. You get negative 5.00 centimeters. All right, and then we can kind of keep going this way. And this is what you would get for the rest of them. Go ahead and practice them on your own because it, this is probably a new skill on how to use your calculator this way to save you some button presses and errors. But it does take practice to figure out, well, well where does the parentheses need to be? Uh, where do my inverses need to be? How do I type that all in? So take, the mo take a moment to practice all this stuff. Okay, so there's quite a bit we talked about in this little unit here. We talked about concave mirrors, convex mirrors, ray diagrams, the mirror equation, and the magnification equation. All right, so do lots of practice problems. All right, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.